<laughs> prediction? Yes, prediction. Pain. <laughs> Clock. Super 16 is the cream of the crop. College football time of year don't stop. We're We're adding this guy. Just another go down with the courage. Hard skill and wit. Bringing you the best 16. Serving up a plate for the football fiends. Breaking the best 16 college teams. Football fans, just to show what you dream. Ain't no bias. Chris Zorris breaking truth. Traded in the golden helmet in the past for a suit. With the tape, never lie. College ball, he's a stoop. Breaking the top 16, not the top 32. I don't mean to cut you off like a Zorvis jersey, but you ain't really grinding unless the jersey dirty. Hit the running back like a Mack truck behind the 30 yard line. It's game time. I see Roddy off the side. You look line. at Chris like this with a fact checklist. Going over college teams like a big scientist. Steve streaking from his head like in his playing days. Super 16 poles on the show straight away. It's the FBS. The best of the best from the ACC to the SEC. Pac 12, Big 10, Mount West, Sun Belt, and the Big 12. Open your eyelids. Who the best like the clock. Super 16 is the cream of the crop. College football time of year don't stop. With Christopher Zurich, just another go down with the courage. Hard skill and will, bringing you the best 16. Serving up a plate for the football teams. Breaking the best 16 college teams. Football fans, just to show what your dreams. Hello everyone and welcome to week five of the Super 16 Poll Show. I want to do a special thank you to the uh, National Football Writers Association and also the National Football Foundation for allowing us to put this together. My love of college football and my sidekick's love of the Bears created this opportunity Phil, would you like to jump in to talk about your – oh, aw, look at that photo. Isn't that cute? That was only taken a mere – what is it, like eight months ago? Nine months ago? Was it? It's crazy. Time is flying, bro. Time is flying by, bro. It's keeping it real. Song? There no? he is. A good song? No? The time is flying by. It sounds like a song. It does sound like a song. See? The times they are a changing, just there you not, go. just not for the Bears. I like that. Well, <laughs> speaking about the Bears, <laughs> speaking of the Bears, speaking of the Bears, um, the Chicago Bears, Chris, another. I don't know how to describe it. All I can think of is they need a little of this. They need a little of that. <laughs> <laughs> you got the logo on oh my look at that. That's a great logo on the front of the bike. I love it. <laughs> they need you rolling up. Maybe the whole team needs a bike to roll up. Now, in all honesty, you know, looking at watching the game back again is just there's so many fingers to point <laughs> around, but at the end of the day, it should all fall merely on the head coach. Sure. And his team just some of the decisions, the play calling and situational football. I know Shane brought a great stat up on BHL about a percentage of fourth and two and punting. Listen, certain things, I guess everybody's learning as they go. But I just, like I said on the show, Chris, I don't, give excuses for football lifetimes like everybody this is the nfl these coaches have coached their entire lives if not multiple years sure you gotta go into new york and you gotta be you can't make daniel jones look like uh <laughs> uh lamar jackson running bootlegs and no one's there no one's home and Missed tackles, drop balls, your boy out of Notre Dame. Just he just doesn't look at I call him clunky Cole Komet. Okay. Clunky Cole. He's I just haven't seen it. Every time I think he's gonna take a step, it goes back to 
looking like he's in, you know, <laughs> low tide trying to run through the, the wow. tide there. It's just he can't get out of there. And so much of this football team infuriates me because it's this is a winnable game. Yeah. Yep. And at the and, and at the end of the day, you got a guy you signed 10 day or a day ago. I was gonna say, riddle me this. If that guy isn't there, do they score any points? No, they don't. What if he misses some of those kicks? Which that's another thing. Could do, I mean he was kind of hanging out, so he he came in there and made you know people recognize who he is. And I did. I I think that was very difficult situation to be placed in and you went oh, in there and answered the bell the absolutely. team didn't the absolutely. guy you picked up 10 days ago i mean one day ago right did, <laughs> right so, the culture and all of that stuff all of it flies out the window if you can't hold everybody accountable and the one thing now i've had several fans reach out to me um and say well to pay for your therapy Maybe, <laughs> but they're like, well, you know, he's not holding them account. He's not doing, and I, I'm there too. I get it. I go. The only thing I don't know is what is he, he might be saying one thing to the media, right. another thing to them, which is and what just, coaches do. I mean, you don't want to sit there and tell your game, give your game plan, or express kind of negative issues, right? Outside, right. This is the only thing I think, though, now. Like, as I've grown older, I think it's very important to always be able to state the obvious. Okay. Because once you do that, like, everybody and their brother knew Justin was terrible last week in last week's game, and the Bears beat the Texans, right? So you owe it to everybody to be like, yeah, He's got to play. You don't have to bury the guy. He knows. I know as the coach, he's got to play better. And you can't do it with just one area. You have to do it across the board. And don't treat fans like they don't know. Now, I would say 30% of them don't know. You know, let's trade David Montgomery after (laughs) – the Packers went out of their way to just stop him, and they couldn't. <laughs> then that story changed. Oh, God. But on opening day, they wanted to – that stuff I get. It's the obvious stuff I don't get. Like Valus Jones, got to catch the ball. Put your hand up, catch the ball, and you got an opportunity to win. I didn't like the call, Chris. I thought you go for it on fourth down right. instead of punting. He ended up getting them pinned inside the the five yard line, and then the Giants had the punt, so you got an opportunity. But lo and behold, in typical Bears fashion, the kid fumbles the punt, and that's the end. Right. So the opportunities are lost, and then it's the red zone stuff. The thing that's, and I'll say this because I'm consistently consistent. Consistently consistent consistently consistent okay. the tape tells me the truth okay. i've always doubted sam mustafer at center and i praise him when he makes a good play but consistently he's not been good enough that's sure. never changed right on sunday it was worse than it ever was so that becomes a story no it's always been a story you can't ignore these issues and think other teams aren't going to scout Right, like I'm scared, like they see it too. So, where's the weakness? They're gonna find it, exploit it, right? And they did it perfectly to the Chicago Bear. And the last thing, really, that I think is most important, and this lies on the feet of the head coach you're the head coach. This coach, more so than anyone else, which I respect the heck out of him for, he's giving the opportunity that he calls the defense, he calls the offense. I'm the CEO. I like that as a head coach, and you have input in it all. The shotgun use of formation and inconsistencies with the formations, to me, 
is so college like you're never going to you have to get just you can't go in the I formation and get 7 yards then come out and empty set the next play on second and 2 or 3 and then go back to the I go this way and the next way you have to have some the giants beat you on misdirection that's all they were doing they were staying in similar formations beating you with misdirection that's the recipe you have to have because every inch matters in football, but every inch completely matters with the Bears because every play needs to be made in order for this offense to sure. be successful, right? So that's why I felt like the coaches lost that game as bad as some players performed. I felt like you're in the game. And looking, even watching it again, it was more infuriating, but I had to see it again because I just don't think Getsy under he doesn't get it. How about that? Getsy don't wow. get it. Wow. He doesn't get his personnel usage. There's no way Cole Komet is the guy that you're throwing a bubble screen to on third and 16. It's just, that's not proper personnel. Darnell Mooney, yes. Right. He could possibly break it. Right. Khalil Herbert, motion him out there, get him behind Cole Komet. Yes, he might break it and get you a big first down. Cole Komet, I would love to see the numbers after catch that he's ever made. Uh -huh. Follow what I'm saying? So he ain't twitchy. He's not tough. Like, he's not fast. So I don't know what he's doing. And that basically – and then the, Chris – my father and I have this show, X's with the O's. You were on once with us. We want to have you come back. The linebackers, they do not read keys. It's just like they're just flowing out of there trying to Jesus. be instinctive. So, like, tackle blocks down. This guy's stepping and going down, and the play's going outside you each time. It kept happening. They're not reading any kind of keys. If guard blocks down, the play's coming there in, in B gap. You got to right. get there. You can't be slide into the run. They're all over the place. And again, I'll break it down on the tape, but really, ultimately, that's what I see with the Chicago Bears. They got completely out coached, out disciplined, out hustled. There's a ball on the ground, Chris. And we got a move. corner, a rookie cornerback who's been getting torched i mean right. i goes through the whole thing but the ball's on the ground and he's celebrating the hit without getting on the football and you have a huge opportunity there to possibly win the game or tie it up nope so i know they have a lot of things to do when it comes to this week and again i'm not like others that are going to say well this is a rebuilding year well the bears have been rebuilding since 85 let's just be <laughs> honest. like what are we doing we get to the super bowl we're going to go back nope we never did again after erlacher and company right how many years are we going to be oh they were going to be rebuilding no that's not how football were and you know it more than ever. yes you can be kaplan and predict all of us can predict, okay, they're only going to win four games, seven games, whatever you think. At the end of the day, every time, that's a winnable game. That's right. a game you should have won that you lost. And you know how contagious and infectious winning is. So I don't sign up for that stuff. Justin played better than he did last week against the Texas, but still not good enough. And – there it is in a nutshell. Well, I want to talk to you about the, the Justin Fields thing. So, I mean, there was a knock before the draft that he came from Ohio State. Their offenses aren't that complex. Um, I mean, are we looking at kind of what they they talked about uh, before the draft? Or, I mean, are you looking at kind of year two 
of still trying to learn a system, although it's new now. So if it, could, it was his first year learning a, a new system again, I mean, is this going to be a constant thing? So your question is twofold, right? You're asking if uh, you're looking to the draft to draft offense. What do you mean? Just No, 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 no. So in the past, so last yeah. year, just mm -hmm. his first year, the knock with Ohio State quarterbacks is that the reason why they're not successful in the, in the NFL is because the system has been easier for them in college. And so is, is that what, what mm -hmm. we're looking at? Or is Justin able to um, decipher a complex defense now, which I don't think he can, but now I, are, are they trying to make it easier? for? Are they trying to make the offensive scheme easier for him? I don't think that's the thing. A, to your answer, I don't think he sees the field well. Obviously, my father and I have talked about it. Uh, your former teammate, Eric Kramer, and I have talked about it. Eric is way harder than I am, even on Justin, saying he just can't read a defense whatsoever. He just wow. doesn't see it. I mean, he's very – he's like, Phil, I don't know who's teaching and coaching. They spent so much time worrying about his footwork and throwing mechanics that you feel like you're throwing this kid off. There is – Nowhere to hide in regards to what it is you're saying. Think about this offensively. If you're touchdown to check down in, at Ohio State and you have an Olympic squad of football players right. running down the field, then sure. yeah, you're hitting these guys. And that was my concern with Justin was the tap wind up deliver. But to my dad's point, is like he's getting the ball there accurately. You got to do what he does well. Okay. And it looks like the Bears are trying to say, this is what we want to do. And Matt Nagy did the same thing. Right. And that's what it's looking like right now. Mm -hmm. I, uh, you know, a lot of people are pointing out the Darnell Mooney. I see what Mike D's talking about here. I don't agree with Mike D at all. We don't come to the NFL to teach you to play quarterback. <laughs> you should come into right. the NFL, learn the system. Yes, you got to learn the system, but I shouldn't have to teach you your throwing mechanics, how to hand off the ball, get under set. All of this stuff should be known or you working on it diligently. Right. I'm not seeing it. And a goal of this team – if I was the GM or coach, my goal wouldn't be, okay, Justin Fields, no matter what. That's my tunnel vision. No, Justin, you better do it. We're going to work our butts off to have you do it. But if you ain't doing it, it's on to the next because that's, mm -hmm. that's the league. Right. The bear, the bear, the look at, imagine if the Arizona Cardinals were like, nope, Josh Rosen's our guy. We got to teach him. <laughs> There'd be no what, what they have now. Right. Right. They recognize these are the things Justin's got to do what he's got to do to be the best. He's getting the reps. You're under center. You're working hard. He's saying he's working hard. But to your point, I think there's a lot of validity to it. I don't like the offensive coordinators formational play calls like mm -hmm. everyone jokes with me about my last year's quotes. Curls, curls, curls. That's all he's running. I'm saying now you got to put some curls in there to loosen him up, get him under center. This isn't hard to do, like, and start running some slants, slant go, let him have success. Now he threw the ball down the field. You could see how accurate he was right. to Mooney. And I don't know, Chris, it, the quarterback position in Chicago has been one with which – I shouldn't have to worry about a guy's throwing in the NFL. Like you should be able to throw a dart down the field, hit these guys accurately. But you know, it is what it is right now. The bears uh, have offensive line issues. They got coaching issues. They got receiver issues. So there's an argument to everybody's argument. So wait, 
the receivers aren't talented enough. We need a lot of that. I just think at the end of the day, you got to make the plays. <laughs> Dante Pettis has to make that play for Justin there. Right. You know, and your receivers got to run the routes. Justin can't fumble the ball out of his hand like Dave Craig. It just can't happen. These things always seem to happen to the Bears quarterback. Meanwhile, the guy up north, he's sitting there slinging the ball. down. I don't care if he's here. He's here. He's got practice squatters. He's got my boy Romeo. <laughs> and he's throwing touchdowns. That's what the Bears should be. Doesn't take – how long did it take Mahomes? <laughs> right. It took him one year sitting right. behind Alex Smith. Oh, I got it now. Well, no. That's that's the difference now in this game, especially with all these RPOs. Chris, there's an RPO in this game. Justin, don't even read it. He just give gave it. If he pulls it, gets behind Komet, he's going down the field. Mm. And the coach made reference to it today. We missed a few quarterback pulls. If you listen to his <laughs> his commentary, because pulls, it's there. pulls, pulls. <laughs> so I don't think anybody comes into the NFL from college and says, I know how to read every defense. That's not what I'm saying. Right. Nobody, everybody and their brother, uh, Eric Kramer. <coughs> I've talked to players, Kerry Collins. I had a good conversation with him. He's like, I thought I knew defense. And then I get to the NFL right. Like, right. and I learn. Okay. Now we're putting in play. This is year two for Justin. New offense, schmoo offense. Same rules apply. Know the routes. If he doesn't know the routes, that's on the OC. Second week of the season, he did not know the routes. Get this pressure. There's your outlet. Boom. Hit it. Until he gets to that point, you're going to have the same struggles that you saw with Mitch Trubisky. You're seeing with him. And I will tell you this, and Steph Froyland seems to be my psychic brain. You cannot, you cannot teach instinctive football decisions. You just have to have it. That's where this scouting and that's where this stuff is. And that's why I said, okay, guys, if he goes through the season and he struggles, 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 you have to look at quarterback right next year. You can't just say, oh, he's going to get it. Then you're the next guy out getting fired because he didn't get it. <laughs> you always are worried about the team first. That's why you always have to be up front with it. People get all nervous. Like I'm t Justin writes his story, not me. Right. I don't write right. his story. If right. he's tremendous, I'm praising him. Right. And when I look at the all 22 tape, I'll see how great or bad he is. But right now I'm just keeping it a hundred. Like I always will. You tired of losing? Got to get better play. Instinctive play from the quarterback. And what was the greatest attribute of Joe Montana? Anticipation accuracy. He didn't have a 60 yard bomb, 68 yard, 72 yard bomb, like test of Verde. He probably <laughs> threw it. 50 yards at the most. Maybe, yeah. Toom, toom. He's throwing it on a dime. He's throwing it on a dime. And then in the in the game, I'm sure his adrenaline's flipped throw, and he's throwing 58, 60 yards in a game because his adrenaline's in it, but he's accurate. Those things can't be taught. They just can't. And Steph Froilin is is on the point. I'm not seeing him. I mean, when you get in cover two, safeties go back. Linebackers are dropping. Yeah. This guy coming on an in cut. This guy's running off. I know that if he's running off, that safety's going deep. There's going to be a little hole there. Boom! Just throw it in there and trust it. I saw him do it in preseason once. I have not seen him do it again. Ouch. So here we are. Now we got to find out who Justin And I ask Bears fans, just be Honest, your eyes don't lie. <laughs> your eyes don't lie. Let go of this. It's like with me. If 
David Montgomery stunk. I'd be t- I'm the one pointing out how great he is because the tape is showing me that. Right. Right. Not oh, David. Dave, you know. So that's where I am right here. And again, it's week four, but it's got to be better than what he's he's been. And he'll be the first one to tell you, to his credit, he played like trash last week. This week it was better. So we'll see how he puts it together because you're going against your a rival this week and the Vikings. Sure. We'll see, we'll see what they do. So what is the cap count? The cap count, the we're two David and cap two. Count. Okay. David Cap says four. We have the audio video. So four where he drops 15 grand on a dinner <laughs> yes. for all of Chicago, right? <laughs> yes. And Benjamin's right. Progression issues totally can be fixed. Instinctive issues are just what those are. Like Walter Payton... Barry Sanders, instinctive runners. Joe Montana, Tom Brady. Jeff Garcia, instinctive passer. You want to watch a guy with a noodle arm? He's throwing instinctive ball. He understood the route, where it's going to be. He threw it way before the guy's going there. That's where you got to get Justin to. That's where we got to go. Uh, Warren Moon, amazing yeah. instinctive passer. Doug Flutie, instinctive passer. You have to be. Same with this kid. Why do I keep forgetting his name in Arizona? Yeah, I think he's like same height as me, for God's sake. What's his Murray? name? Yeah, Murray. Tyler Murray? Let's just watch this little runt play. <laughs> He's so instinctive with his throw and understanding where they're going. Just boom, puts it way out, shallow cross. He doesn't throw it to the guy. He throws it over and lets the guy run to it. He's Murray is one of the most instinctive young passers you'll see. And he's not looking to run. That's his last resort. Big fan of what I've been seeing with Kyler Murray. Anyway. Anyway. Bears run down there. There we go. Thank you for my daily fix <laughs> of my bear information. Um, <laughs> your your Monday. My yeah. Monday fix. <laughs> Thank you. Wow. <laughs> Jeffrey. Number 47. Notre Dame. Jeffrey, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Yes, we we did did not lose today. Wow, you lose two games and everybody's all over you, dude. What's it like over there? It's it's interesting. Is the mood exciting? The guys are fired up. Yes. Um, okay, so they're ready to get back. Yes, yes. Okay. I have not talked to each individual guy, but yes, it, it, it looks like guys are ready to go and. They did a, a huge video promo for this game, so they better show up. Well, they better show up is right. This is a big deal. There's no way he's 5'10". I would say he's like 5'9 at the most. Five after, you, after you just called him a runt. Okay, great. Well, he is a runt. In the whole league, at he's five, the ten. shortest. At 5'10". Okay. He ain't 5'10". He ain't 5'10"? No way. Okay. I'm called uh-huh. BS on 510. I'm telling you. I just praise this kid beyond anything. This fact that he's short, uh, trust me, you and I know. <coughs> you played in the NFL at a position at a time when short defensive linemen were as valuable as a freaking one of those <laughs> Carnival candies. What are those things? The carnival peanuts. Those things are the worst candy there is. They didn't want anyone short. That says a lot about you. Yeah, that I was short. That, 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 I was you, that you made that it. I was a runt. I was a runt. You were a runt. A Look runt. at who was <laughs> William Perry, Steve McMichael, 
Who else was with you on that defensive line? Carl Richard, Simpson? Carl Simpson? Carl Trace. Simpson? Who was it? Who was the last one? Trace Armstrong? Trace Armstrong? Oh, you're talking about DNs. I'm thinking just D tackles. Oh, just D tackles. Okay. McMichael, Fridge, you. Carl Simpson. Carl Simpson. Tim Ryan. Played for Tim USC. Ryan. Now he's an announcer. Yeah, um, he does the 49ers. Yes. He's a good dude. He is. A really good guy. That was it? Those are the D linemen? Tackles, yeah. I mean, yeah. there were some other guys. There you go. Well, you were the shortest one, were you not? That's true, I was, yes. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> I'm not sure I just admitted to you, but okay, thank you. But you are, I mean, that says a lot at that time. You were able to play and penetrate and use, like they said, that leverage. I'm excited about defensive tackles like that and you were able to do that and we're good at it yeah russell wilson is like 510 no doubt and kyler murray is shorter than him (laughs) just let you know there's hope guys there's there is there is hope for a short (laughs) quarterback (laughs) and short defensive lineman in the nfl (laughs) how tall was doug flutie I think he was like 5'10", right? Yeah, 5'9". Five, 5'9", nine. Five, nine, he said. That's what he said. Okay. All right. And he had to go to Canada. And then the Bears. And then the Bears. The Bears. Were you on the team with him? I was not. No, I'm, I'm okay. only 52. Okay. Oh, thank you. I'm 53. Thank you very much. <laughs> not 60. Anyway. Right. Let's go. I think we have a show. ready to here. rock and roll? I am. It was an exciting week for Great everyone. Week. There may be a little controversy Uh-oh. at the top, but let's talk <laughs> about number 16. Number 16. Wait for it. And I can say welcome back to the poll. They were in the poll before, and as you know, they were actually the quarterback – uh, Sam Hartman was kind of part of my uh, my th- my final thoughts a little bit because uh, he actually just uh, had an issue. Uh, God, what was it? It was it wasn't cancer, it was something else. But uh, he was out for a while and actually came back and he's, he's thrown up some great numbers. Um, they did okay against Clemson. They almost beat him. Uh, but they had a chance to be Florida State, so you know we, we are excited about that. That's why they're making a redo at number 16. I mean, they did okay against Clemson. They went into overtime. Well, right, but they didn't win. I mean, <laughs> that was a hard battle. It was a hard – that's what I'm saying. They did okay. Well, they did great. Okay. They did awesome. Okay, they did it's awesome. Wake Forest. <laughs> right. Give them a shot. What was the spread our, on our that? Level, our, our, our level of expectation – Mm-hmm. For for Wake Forest is, is is high now, remember? No, I know. All last year we, we were we were on last the year, right? Last year they they were undefeated for a long time. Exactly. So you could see this is going to be the next coach they're going to try to pillage out of there. Even though I think he signed a new deal last I think year. He did, but but there's some other coaches in our in our sixteen that are definitely going going to get a nod. Definitely. There you go. Wake Force, number 16. Number and, 15? Oh, you have something else. Oh, I don't. I'm t- talking about coaches. There mm-hmm. are some openings, unfortunately, which we'll, we may talk about for a little bit, which is sad. But um, haven't looked at App State. Let me see what App State's doing since everybody's, um, you know, how, how much we kind of love our uh, App State folks now. Yes. Uh, I'm not sure what they're, what they're at, but. I know they wound up losing to like Memphis the week uh, after they they blew out Texas a and So we may not hear from App State for a while. App State was walking in Memphis. Well, there we go. Hey. <laughs> Love and it. They... Okay, now we can go to 15. Number. Number 15. Baylor. Since you started to sing, you know, I wanted to kind of 
home of Singletary. There you go. You always say that's awesome. You always say that. So here it is. And we 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 love us some Baylor. And it yes. was interesting because it was Baylor, Ole Miss, Oklahoma State, and they they were in the thick of it. And it was interesting because those are some of the great games. I don't know if you saw any of those games, but they it, they were actually great. Um, it was like nine versus eight, eight versus seven, seven versus ten. I mean, it was, it was crazy. I, I didn't get to see Baylor at all. I was with the kids. <coughs> my, my daughter's birthday. She turned oh, eighteen. Nice. Oh, that's a and big my one. mom's birthday mm. is today, but we celebrated it Saturday. Okay. And it was supposed to like pour here, but it didn't. So they canceled our football game. Oh wow! And my parents were supposed to come to, and boom, that was the whole. And then we went and ended up going to dinner, and it was a freaking hour and forty-five minute wait with kids. Jesus, where'd y'all go? Long Texas Longhorn. Okay. Longhorn Steakhouse. Right. So me and my buddy are sitting in the hallway at the bar watching Penn State, Baylor. We were watching okay. Oklahoma get blasted yes. while we are waiting for dinner. Yes. <laughs> and I was trying to get them to turn to the old, the old Miss Kentucky ending. Yeah. But then I had to put it on my phone okay. so I could well, see it. it we will be crazy. there in a minute, but... They have a West Virginia next, and yes. we're excited because um, it was actually just a good game. I mean, it, it, it's hard to kind of – because we've been talking about Oklahoma State last year, this year. They're not getting any love. I right. think they're a good team. I uh, I think really no one kind of put them on the map until they until after they they beat Notre Dame, and then all of a sudden they they got some recognition. But one they obviously haven't lost. But the the idea that they're playing competitive uh, football again it's, it's in the Big Twelve where they where they don't care about scoring, but they're able to come up with with, with some good wins. So although we liked Baylor. Um, they may be out considering what happens next week. So they're playing – oh, no, they have a bye next week, so they, they may be safe, but they're going to play West Virginia after that. Baylor always has a high-powered offense. Their defense you always have to worry about. But with a bye, they could stay at 15. Uh-oh. You never know. Who you knows? never know. Who knows? Let's, let's Who go to – also. Let's go to number 14. Number 14, Kentucky. Again, another drop. These guys dropped five down yep. to 14. We loved us some Kentucky. We, we talked about that. However, they went up against our guy Ole Miss, and, and this is kind of, I mean, it's, 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 it's crazy, right, because they wound up losing 22-19, close score. Great but game. It was a great – thank you very much. It was an actually a, a great game. Uh, the quarterback is now almost over 1,400 yards, which is impressive considering we're only talking about week five. Uh, I'm excited to kind of keep tabs on them. Not mm-hmm. sure how far they're going to go. They're going to play an okay South Carolina team, so I, I think they may do well. Yeah, Kentucky, a lot of hype on the quarterback. I know there was like nine scouts – Will Lewis, yeah. Game. Huh? Will Lewis is the quarterback. No, the quarterback from Kentucky. They were yes. all. That's, that's oh, okay. That's okay. That's all right. <laughs> I thought he had a different name. And the other kid, the other quarterback, Dart, who is the transfer from USC playing at Ole Miss. Yes. Oh, that's I'm a big. I'm yes. a big fan of him. Dart. Mm-hmm. Um, the kid from Kentucky is impressive, like you said, over 1,400. Uh, has the strip sack at the end of the game. Yeah. Deadly. So, But keep an eye on this kid out of Kentucky as well as Ole Miss. I like the quarterback play at both. Well, we aren't at Ole Miss yet. There's I'm just strip. saying they were playing strip. in that game. There's a right? strip, damn it. 
<laughs> Where's the drop? Wow. It's not on the script. Thank God. It's not Thank on God. the script. It's on the script. It's on the script. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Let's go to number 13. Chris. Let's do that. Number 13. BYU. So they, they oh, make their it debut. Is. Here it is. Oh, you found it? No, here. BYU. They yes. make their debut. Yes. At 13. And who do they play? Who did they play this week? This week, <laughs> they played Utah State. No. Who did next they play week. coming up? This next weekend. week, they're going to play Notre Dame. There we go. In the Shamrock Series. Yes. In what Vegas, is this baby. Shamrock series, series? What is huh? this? So this is a, something that they created like 2009 where they just go around the country playing teams and literally set up house in a neutral site. So, for example, oh, this was really? going to be BYU last year. Or excuse me, yeah, last year it was playing Wisconsin in Soldier Field. And so they actually bring – they actually have like a mass. They got a big community service thing they do. So, like, it's, it's almost like a bowl game. Oh, where okay. folks kind of get excited about it. It's kind of interesting, though, because when you look at it, like, uh, it originally started off because they were trying to go to areas that, that they, they didn't recruit, right? Or they didn't have any opponents in. And that so now, now it's become to like this big splash. Now it's more of a media thing. They, they do, like, different helmets. Uh, Are they going to go Catholics versus Mormons? I'm sure there's several thousand T-shirts that will say that. Um, they they often do like a special uniform for this game, and I don't know if you have saw that promo I was talking about earlier, but they actually did like a little parody on the whole um, uh, what was it? Um, not honey. Um, I ran to my tongue. Damn, I forgot. With uh, I forgot who it was. Um, the uh, come on, uh, Zach, uh, Zach Alphanakis. Um, oh, the hangover, yes, yes, thank you. The very hangover, much. Right. right? So, they want to do a little parody of that freaking hilarious. Uh, <laughs> who knew that, that those guys could actually act? Um, but now they actually have to show up and, and play, and actually, BYU, um, they have a <laughs> A quarterback now, Hall, who's thrown up over fourteen hundred yards as well. Um, this is somebody that that they should be a little nervous about. Um, hopefully, the defensive line will have a chance to kind of show their stuff. Um, this is going to be really interesting because they've been talking about the the quarterback. That that would be hilarious um, if if what Benjamin says is true because Notre Dame is wearing all white. Which is with, with like gold accents, so that, it, that's going to be an interesting game. Um, I myself am not a huge fan of playing this uh, Shamrock Series game, although it's it's great pub for the school. Um, I don't necessarily like the uniforms that we have. We, we we already talked about that, but the exciting thing is that Notre Dame will have a chance to redeem themselves from the the Marshall game. You know, everybody's kind of counting them out. Let's remember, although they dropped out of the top 25, they only lost, like, one game to, like, a bad team, and that was Marshall. Everybody thinks they kind of lost other games. But they lost to Ohio State by 11 points and then got their buff kicked against Marshall, and then everybody thinks they lost, like, 12 games, but they haven't. So this is a redemption game for my Irish. The Irish. The Irish. Are hustling. They need it. They, they need, need this win. They need this win. I'm sure we'll be calling or texting. I'll be calling or texting you about the the awesome plays that that, that will happen. Now, who Here's is here. going to be the starting quarterback for the Irish this weekend? Oh, well, unfortunately, it's going to be uh, what's, what's his name? face? Pain. Pain. Yeah. Now, can they play a little House of Pain to get them fired up? I'm sure they will. That, that would be really cool. <laughs> Prediction. Pain. Pain. Love it. We can get that pain out there. 
for them, the Irish? Will they be wearing green? Did you not hear? You, you were too busy texting. I'm trying to. That, that they I'm were in the business. I'm doing. I know. For you're, you're 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 in the business. As I was saying on our live show, they're going to be yes. dressed in all white. All white. All white. All white. All right. Exactly. With gold <laughs> accents. Gold accents. Damn Is it. it. True. Damn it. Pay put. attention. <laughs> Pay attention. <laughs> I was stalling in the business okay. because Russian Ronnie came in and saved the day. Okay, there we go. <laughs> For number 12. The there was no 12, Chris. I didn't know that. <laughs> so that's what I was doing. Well, Cherie brought it to my attention. We've the done producer. it before. We'll I texted Ron. We, we can ad lib a 12. And look, and Ron G <laughs> stopped everything that he was doing to make sure 12. He came back from the wedding? He came, he came back, from, back the from the wedding. He's back. He's back from the wedding. He actually put down his knife and fork, it's letting his steak get cold. Oh, to fix this show and make it as great as he does. He does all the graphics. Yes, he does. And, and Russian Ronnie is great, and that's the reason why we did not nickname him that. So. <laughs> he's always rushing, so it's rushing, Ronnie. Rushing He's the Walter Payton of producers. There we go. Rushing. Rushing. Did you play with Neil Anderson? I did not. I'm only 53. Come on, man. Wait a second. Neil no, I, I did. I did. I played. Okay. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Okay. okay. I was you, thinking. You're, you're, you're like, throwing all these, all these old guys, man. It's like, come on. Listen, I, I live for the history of these players. Neil Anderson, quiet guy, right? Florida, Laugh, yes. Absolutely. Always smiled or was he yes. funny? Great player, great player. Great player out of Florida. Florida, there you go. He was a senior when Emmett was a sophomore. I didn't know that. Yeah. Emmett backed up Neil. Interesting. There you go. Okay. Let's go to number 12 for Russian. Let's go. Let's go. Notre Thanks. Dame, BYU this weekend. Yes. I'm excited about it. On the it. Peacock and NBC. Are you going to be on the sideline again? I'm not going to be in a kilt on the sideline. It's in Vegas, and I'm I'm going to be watching for my TV just okay. as you will so be. We're definitely going to be texting. Definitely. All right, let's go to number twelve. Number twelve, Utah. These guys are making their debut as well. Debut, although it's kind of high. But here's the thing. Again, um, hi, 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 hi. <laughs> there you go. Yep, I like it. I like it. I like it. Um, they beat an okay Oregon State. It's just that that these, should be a drop, Cherie. Did you see are, him dancing? Oh, come on. Hey, really? I like it. <laughs> That's wrong, man. That uh, is you wrong. give me, you give me great material, man. What can I say? But come yeah. On. They're moving and up. They're the, moving the up. This quarterback, Cameron Rising, looks like just a uh, redneck. Just, I mean, he has a mullet. He has this, 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 this goatee looking thing, <laughs> and he's just balling, just absolutely balling. And so I kind of love that. So let's see, though. Let's, oh, let's, let's, HL. Let's really see. They must be playing Michigan and or something. We only. Do 16. So I don't Fair know what not. you're talking about with, with number 25. I haven't even heard of that. Who has a top 25 rank? Who's to, who's doing 25? Exactly. We do 16 here. We do 16. The we super, super 16. Poo! Poo! Show. Show. We do 25. Who does 25? That's too many. <laughs> All right. So they will be playing UCLA. A good UCLA team. Now, actually undefeated. So it's interesting. And listen. Spoiler alert. Please. Chip Kelly. I don't see Chip Kelly in 16. At 16 right, because I think there are better teams. We can, we can look and see who, who Chip Kelly plays. UCLA. Let's find out. They blew somebody out this weekend. Let's see who it was. What was um, it? 44 to... Was it... I was, I was kind of shocked. I was expecting UCLA I can't to make it. their debut. Man. Man. Man up. I'm on the wrong I'm man the down wrong, uh... UCLA, the Bruins. Right. I know, but I can't find him. 
they played they play Utah on Saturday. Right, but they spanked yeah. Washington. They, is that who was? To, oh, they spanked Bowling Green September. 3rd. Oh, right. Okay, okay. Fine. UCLA. But if you wait, play wait, wait, doo doo teams, then come on. <laughs> they beat Washington. That was ranked twenty one. Oh, they were forty to thirty two. Mm-hmm. In another poll, they were ranked twenty. Oh, <laughs> another, another poll, poll that goes to twenty five, right? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I haven't even heard of that. UCLA is undefeated right now, five and zero. I'll give you their their wins, please, just in case you have haters. Okay, September third, they opened up with Bowling Green. They spanked them forty five seventeen. Bowling Green, all right. Then they played Alabama State, Chris. Okay. All right. 45 to 7. They Thank like 45. Uh, they and like then Southern number. Alabama? What, what was that? South score? Alabama, 32 31. Okay. Then they played Colorado. I see you in the backfield sticking Eric Bienemy. Bienemy in the house. 45 17. They, they love this number 45. They Apparently. scored it three times. And then and? they and then they beat Washington forty to thirty two. You're not a believer. One, two, not three, yet. four, five and zero. Oh. Right, five and zero oh against South Alabama. Yes. Okay. Um, Cheney State. That's what James Williams won actually. Big that's what I was testing you. Oh man, hey man, I know my HBCU. <laughs> Look at you, man, my boys. Look, Look at you. So, I mean, I'm just not impressed with them yet. Okay, let's see after this weekend. How about that? This is a big game. All right. Right fair here. Fair enough. We know if they win, I can guarantee Chris is finding a place for 16. Wow. Anyway, UCLA not there. Utah is. Let's go to number 11. Hello. Number 11. Penn State. Okay, these guys moved up four spots after just barely beating Northwestern, who's having oh an atrocious God. year. But here's the thing: I couldn't like drop them, right? Because I feel that they're like better than some of the other teams out there. And even though this wasn't a great performance from them, even though, um, I mean, they're. Actually, ranked pretty, they're actually pretty good, and we love the quarterback. Yeah, so, I love the quarterback, man. There, and then even at the top, man, there's a couple of them where they had to stay put, even though they actually won, which is kind of interesting. I've never had this problem before. This is an interesting football team because they have all the makings as to what you're saying. They got right. the quarterback. They got a double dose of good running backs. Mm-hmm. They got some good receivers. They got a good defense. So this is one of those teams that is like a, a nice wine. Gets better with age. There you As go. the season goes, we might see Penn State moving up. Who do they play this weekend? Well, they actually have what is called a bye. Well, they're on a bye. They're on a bye. And then they play bye, bye, bye. That, that, that team in Ann Arbor. Oh, oh snap! That's must see TV. Uh, Is that uh, going to be a whiteout game? I hope. Uh, it's actually going to be at Michigan. Michigan. Oh, there you go. That's this is the game that I don't. That, well, we're a week away from that. Thank you. Please I save won't it. Talk about save this. it. Save it. They're save on a buy. Eleven. Put it on your. Put on your. Put your it phone. in my calendar. Exactly right. Put it in calendar. Let's go How's to number, number 10, 10 looking like? 10. Number 10, Oregon. Here we go. So now this is, they're, they're, they're moving up. Now, you may recall they were ranked high in the beginning of the year, but they actually played that juggernaut that we all know as Georgia. Georgia. And got spanked. Whoop, whoop. 
Whoop whoop. Whoop whoop. So they <laughs> went down, but actually they they they've actually been playing great ball since then. And super transfer Bo Nix, <laughs> who went to like five schools, um, from Auburn. Remember that story? Bo Nix. Yes. He's, he's still has some great yards. I mean, he has he has like twelve hundred right now, but they they beat at the time uh, number thirteen BYU. So it's going to be kind of interesting uh, how these Ducks do. And that's actually maybe the second best team in the Pac twelve. Maybe. 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 I wonder maybe. who the first team is. Wonder who the first team is. <laughs> How about we go to number nine? Let's go to the SEC. Mm-mm. Number nine, Tennessee. So these guys uh, move up. After, Rocky Top. After a Rocky bye. Top, How about that? I, listen, Tennessee to me. They're, they're is looking a story. good, man. They're, they're looking a story. good. They are. They haven't looked this good in a long time since T. Martin. Well, how about I forgot that Josh Heupel was a baller. He was. I didn't realize he's a second in Heisman voting. Yeah, at Oklahoma, right? Oklahoma. About, yes, Oklahoma. He, well, he transferred, but yeah. How about that, that? Oklahoma? I, I totally I forgot still, about that. I still see him. I thought but, he won the Heisman. That's what. How much I know. That's okay. There was a time where the Heisman like kind of became Men's come something. On, guys. Oh, really? Yeah, come when on, Danny Werfel's winning it. So, and... is that when you want to win it? You know, it's like oh, you know. <laughs> I'm, I'm just saying. I mean, it's, it's I was a saying. big big ass award. <laughs> like yeah, yeah, you know, Heisman. They kept giving okay. it to like, like wow, guys really? that I felt like didn't deserve it. How about wow. that? Wow, really? I'm serious, man. That's a hard ass trophy to win. Hell yeah, it is. But then it became a popularity uh, thing. Uh, 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 I think we got to go back and look at some of the on one show Heisman. Who Heisman. should have won the Heisman? Who should have won? Yes, yes. Okay, Let's fair look, enough. A look back. Fair enough. Did Baker Mayfield deserve the Heisman over? Absolutely, he deserved the Heisman. All right. Just like I Stetson Bennett is going to. Okay, I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, Tennessee so, though they they're on a bye. Huh? Who did Tennessee play? They were on a bye. I know. They're all on a bye, bye, right. bye. Right. But then they have, as Benjamin talked about, we've got yes. LSU coming up. And then this got is it. This hey, is man. when we find out the truth. Enjoy your top nine ranking, Josh. Oh, you don't believe. Come on, man. You don't believe in Tennessee? Tennessee. Take me Tennessee. to another hey, place. Uh-oh. Take me that to was, um, another land. Ah, uh, come on. It was let um, me forget all. Uh, let me understand your plan. Tennessee. Oh my god. I had uh, it in my head just now. Music is coming on this show to <laughs> arrested thank development. You, thank you, thank you, thank you. Our thank super you. producer. Yes. Coming up with Man, all I the love facts. the rest of development. Thank you. Yes, that, that was a great album. I was about to say Digital Underground, which is definitely not. True. That wasn't that was That's the hump to right. hump. Yes. Speaking of getting over some humps, let's go to number eight. Number A USC. Okay, now I, I know I'm gonna get jacked up for this, but they actually dropped two spots after. They beat Arizona State. Now, again, beating Arizona State, no coach. I mean, 42-25, you're supposed to win that game. Uh, Caleb threw for some crazy yards, earning almost 50 yards. But here's the thing. Um, I mean, although, hey, he's not a Heisman watched, I had to drop them because we had some teams that actually played a little better opponents and also played better ball than USC did, and and I'm a huge, huge fan of USC, but they're supposed to win these games. So I'm not going to give credit where credit is due when they're supposed to dominate a team that has no coach and that they've been balling um, against in the past. But uh, I don't want to drop them anymore, but, like, literally there's no room at the top at this point. I hear you. I hear you, and – 
they struggled the week before. They didn't play their brand right. that I was hoping to see. And then la- this past week, they played a heck of a well, lot better. Team, but, I mean, it didn't have a coach. So, I mean, it's kind of like, like you said. Eh, right. You know I mean? eh. 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 So, I had to drop them a little bit because, I mean, our number seven – Actually played a worthy opponent, and I think they're balling, and we're fans of them. You want to shoot the number seven? Let's go. Number seven, Oklahoma State. Now, again, these guys stayed now at seven, but they actually beat a our number 10 Baylor team, which which we, we loved. And I, I think it's going to be an interesting year for at least this team in the Big 12 because – I don't know if you remember last year, it came down to that one play uh, for the uh, the the championship. It was between Baylor and Oklahoma State. So, I mean, oh, this, yeah. This is great football. Um, I mean, I'm excited watching this. And that's why I think, like, all these teams are kind of, like, really equal when you look at them. We love the USC <laughs> Trojans. I love we, them. But we, I can't compare – uh, Oklahoma State beating Baylor to, to USC, USC beating, beating Arizona State with, with no coach. You know, yeah, I mean, like with all that controversy there. I mean, they're supposed now. Now, if they lost, oh my God, yes, I mean they'd be gone, right? But you're supposed to beat teams that that have adversity in their back pocket. You know, unfortunately, unfortunately. Yeah, you have to, and USC has looked great. Oklahoma so now, State, though, is looking great. Which no one gives a lot of credit to. So, so that's why Okie State stayed there and USC dropped too, which is interesting because I've never had to do that before. But this is the TTNL network. And as we say, the, <laughs> the tape, tape never, never lies. lies. The tape never lies. Tape never lies. Speaking what does it away, say about – I got to just – Jump off one second while okay. I press number six. I got to tell my daughter. Yes. She's got to go pick up her sister. That's important. Yes, that's why she can't get a hold of her. So I got to, I'm going to press number six and I'll be right back. I'll let Chris handle six. Love it. Number six. Oh, Miss. Okay, folks. Now, this is the team we're talking about with Dart. He's throwing up some great, great numbers. <laughs> he had uh, over 200 yards this game. Uh, and, and we like uh, our Ole Miss team because it's Lane Kiffin and everybody thinks he's a nut. But they want to move it up two spots. Uh, they they beat a really good Kentucky team. Again, it was only 22-19. But these are teams that are beating good teams. So if we go back to I think was Benjamin, I'm not sure who it was, Talk about um, USC. <clears throat> They're supposed to be beating um, Arizona State anyway, but when you have teams like Ole Miss and uh, Oklahoma State, Baylor, Kentucky, I mean, these are teams that are neck and neck. They're good conferences, yep. so you you expect a really good game. So the the, the fact that we we're excited to watch. I mean, that was one of my top five games was to watch. I didn't know who was going to win, but watch Ole Miss uh, beat Kentucky 22-19. I was watching game day that morning, and I was surprised that a lot of people picked Kentucky. I yeah. felt like – Yeah. I felt like Ole Miss, the running game in Ole Miss. Um I get a little fired up, man. I know. We've been talking. That's a that's on our bucket list to get to a game at Ole Miss. Yes, sir. The crowd was amped up. I guess Lane was fired up that there weren't more people. Yeah, Did you hear that? He made a comment about that. <laughs> I totally love that because I could see me saying the same thing. If how could you all not show up for us? Well, and then you're talking about a top 10 team. I know. I mean, you know, it's not like this happens every Wednesday. It's like, oh, all of a sudden we're going to be like Alabama. And we're like, oh, well, you know, we're just going to stay in the top 10 all year. I mean, come on. You know, it might not happen. 
Ole Miss. I'm excited about Ole Miss. Again, I love the kid Dart. Mm -hmm. Transfer from Mule's team, USC. Going over to I Ole was Miss. Foster. No. No, that was oh, me. Okay. I tried. Oh, okay. Oh, see, I forgot. Yeah, it was you. Sorry. I was too short to play quarterback. Yeah. Well, you're a runt. That's why. If I, I know. Runt. If I was a six foot runt, I think I could have played quarterback. I don't know. Is that um, uh, what's <laughs> face jersey in the background? Murray's height? No, is that um? Oh, that's, that's my jersey. jersey in the background. That's my uh, high school jersey. Oh, I thought that was Emmett Smith's jersey. <laughs> from Florida. Okay. It's Neil Anderson's jersey. There you go. There you you go. know Walter Payton wore 22 in college. I did not know that. Is that yeah. why you wore 22 in high school? No. Why did you I wear wanted to wear number 34. Okay. And the senior had it. I had wore 22 because the same thing happened in the Pop Warner League. I wanted to wear 34. And my dad's like, well, why don't you wear your own choice? Wear your own number. I was like, okay, I'll wear 22. Nice. The double deuces. Nice. And it really was inspired by Doug Flutie, to be honest, because I was so short. Oh, I didn't know that. That's awesome. See, how yeah. all the good stuff comes out. Yes, it's college I'm football. The show. There you go. I lived watching college football. Saturdays with my dad was like, well, I would go outside. I don't know about you. And then play yeah. college football. Yeah, play the college right. football, tackling people into the trees and shit. In the street, yeah. But then okay. you're tired. You come back in, and the second half is about, and that's when everything's getting golden. I could still see it. Memories. I love it. Oh, my God. The smell of the yes, fall. We, we actually talked about that last week, I think. Yeah. What about number five? People are going to be Let's go, fan. baby. Sheree Shaker. Number. Five, Michigan. All right, folks. This is kind of this was a tough one. This was yeah, mm. exactly. Where am I? How am I five? See, so last week Michigan was four, but let's take a look why they yes. beat Col they they beat Colorado State. They beat Hawaii. They beat UConn. UConn, baby. They beat Maryland. Maryland. And they beat Maryland Iowa. Maryland was tough. And, and they beat Iowa. Iowa. Almost they lost go, to Maryland. Listen, they they have gone to Iowa, and they did a good job on the broadcast. Because yes. I was able to watch this game. Okay. Talk and they showed how many times they've gone to Iowa and had letdowns. Yes. And it's been a lot. So to get over those, listen, the Bears can't win at Lambeau, it seems, right? <laughs> we can't beat the Packers at all, basically, now. So it was important for them to get over that mental hurdle. Although they did let Iowa score late, there which you made it look closer. I didn't like that. So here's my reasoning. Yes. Right? Number five. Last week was Clemson. Who's number five? Who's number four this week? Let's see. Number four, Clemson. So it was a switcheroo. 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 And the reason why was because let's take a look at the teams that Clemson beat Georgia Tech, yeah. Conference, Furman. Non-conference. Louisiana Tech, non-conference. Non-conference. Wake Forest, ranked in another poll. Conference. Okay. UNC, I'm sorry, um, North Carolina, who we've ranked, we liked. Yep. They beat them. So you got back-to-back -back two ranked teams. Okay. That's my reason. Back-to-back. -back Overtime with Wake Forest, we talked about. You and I talked about two overtimes. Yep. They beat a good NCT. Okay. Okay. So, thank you. you. Got, I get it. I 
honestly get where you're coming from. So that's that is why. I actually have to hard. agree hard. with Chris here. It was hard. Based on the competition's layout, Clemson has had a tougher road as far as opponents. So you got to go with the tape. Because? The tape never lies. Oh, hey, oh. Hey, hey, hey. There we go. Super so. 16 poll That's show. <laughs> With Chris or our producer splitting. There we go. She's quitting in the middle of the show. Such a diehard Michigan fan. She's out. I'm <laughs> she's out. Done. She's gonna drop the mic. She's gonna drop the producer. Key. Four or five. Done. Come on. She's done. She's it's done. only one spot, Cherie. Can I talk you back into it? There you go. There she's back. But now here's the thing now. How how are they gonna play against Indiana? And now am I nervous for Ohio State? I'm talking about Michigan now. Yeah. Have I all of a sudden become nervous, which I wasn't before, about the the Ohio State game now? You mean Michigan Ohio State? Correct. Because well, that's w- weeks off. Well, I know. What do you mean for them to both be about. undefeated? To both be undefeated? What do you mean? Well, I'm just saying. I mean, there's a couple of hurdles that Michigan has to go that has to come through, and before, I was fine with it, but, I mean, you have to blow teams out because that the, the other team in the other division. Ohio State? Oh, they're blowing teams out. Well, who have they played? Oh. Let's look at what they've Let's beaten. see. Let me look at their football program. Let's see who they played. Rutgers? Notre Dame? Was there a fight after Rutgers? Arkansas State, that's a tough one. It is. <laughs> Notre Wisconsin. Dame ranked 47 yeah. in our poll. <laughs> ranked 47. That's a tough one. Yes, it is. Toledo, look out for the Toledo Horn Frogs. Now, what is the Toledo? Toledo Rockets. Rockets, Toledo Rockets. Wisconsin. The Badgers. Who got smashed by Illinois. Illini. The Illini. Yes. Holy shit. So, so there you go. Hey, hey. But There's an argument said, to be made there, Chris. We are getting ahead of ourselves. But <laughs> looking at it, now, now I'm just nervous uh, against Indiana now. I mean, I'm worried I'm, about Michigan beating Indiana. I, I, I am. By, by a score that is going to be respectable. Right. So let me ask you this. If Michigan beats Indiana 35-21, is that respectable? No. No? No. <laughs> Indiana lost to Nebraska. Oh, boy. Huh? They lost to Cincinnati. Huh? 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 I like they how you said no. They beat Western Kentucky and no. I'm just looking at this because I have it up here. Thank God. And they beat Idaho. So okay. So what has no head coach? Michigan should go into Indiana and beat them. What? Forty-two to nothing. Well, I mean, obviously that that would be nice, but I mean, I'm looking for some domination All because. Right. Let's see what they do. It's like okay, all right. That will be Richard Gordon's like, so we gotta win 54 to nothing for (laughs) Chris. Well, I mean that'd be nice. Considering considering Ohio State put up 52 on Wisconsin, but that's a whole different story. Which Wisconsin is terrible. I don't know where they are. Well, I can't believe they got the coach got fired, but that's a whole that's a conversation. Oh my god, dude. All right, so are we at number three? Because I want to save some time to talk about this. Number three, Alabama. Here we go now. Now, Alabama's going to stay at number three because <laughs> because, <laughs> because they beat a 13 Arkansas, and that game was actually kind of exciting. I actually kind of liked it. Oh, my God. That was the game I was trying to talk the bartender. Like, can you put on the Alabama game? Like, huh, I, had to, huh, huh? 
I had to use one of those forbidden apps so I can get the game. Uh-oh. Because it's on your local channel. You can't right. get it. Right. CBS is so odd with their streaming. It yeah. drives me insane. Yeah. So I found it. I've been and trying was to watch able... a couple of those. Yeah. But, CBS. So again, now we... Oh, I'm sorry. So Alabama. I want to talk to about uh, Clemson one more time because everybody was hating on DJ uh, you that, that that everybody kind of hated. Yes. Myself threw included. Over, threw up over 200 yards, kicking ass now. Can you admit that now? He he looked so much more confident. There you go. As a football player. Over 1,200 yards. We're only in week five. How about the kid Shipley? That's what, a good what, football player, number oh, one. Right? Back, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah that was great. Taking that flare route. Yes. Oof. See, man. We're on the same page with some of the stuff. Anyway, okay, so we can bounce back to Alabama. I'm a little kind of upset, even though we, we saw what can happen. Um, Bryce Young did not return after the first half. That scares me. Now. It scares me with that kid. I want to see him healthy. Yes. Uh, apparently, he said that he might not play. He's not sure. I think he said it's day to day. Yeah, day to day. So Alabama, who do they have? Ooh, they got Again. A&M. Are you kidding me? Who do they have? This is the rivalry. Bro, this is going to be in the, Saturday night. Shit talking. This is going to be like. And Bryce not being in the game is a written excuse for Nick. Well, he won't use it, though. Let's just see if he if he is out. But here's the thing, now, All that shit that Jimbo was talking. Yeah. Oh, my God. Now, I, I know Nick started it, but, you know, for him to kind of go off on on, on, uh, on, a, on a Nick like that. Tell you, his sons weren't on the field with their gold chains this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> Mississippi State all up in. How about Texas that? A&M. Wow, Man. I was like, I was Man. looking at the score. I'm like, Man. what the See? Mississippi State? And they somehow they have the number one team that ever existed in college athletics recruiting. Yeah, exactly. They got like 35 five stars. They're like a galaxy. They have so many stars. <laughs> it's like <laughs> I like that one. <laughs> oh, they're Andor over here. Uh oh! Have you started well, watching this yet? Uh, I, have I have. You haven't? Come on, man! I'm. I like the build up. I like to let a few apps. There's like I don't, five. There's like five shows now. There's already. five in the box. I think that's when I start. Yeah, okay. then I start. Are and you a Game of Thrones guy? Wait, oh my god! Are you kidding me? So you started that then too? I'm watching that religiously again. Matter of fact, I went back and started to read the books from the beginning. Really. You're Dude. reading books. Look at Dude, you. This is my. That's my. Where do you find favorite. time to read? This man, you, you, you got to find time for Game of Thrones, man. Damn, you're a big is, Game of Thrones. It is just, it's special, man. Let it me is. call my guy. Maybe I can get uh, uh, Snow on the show with us. There you go. Um, <laughs> Jack it says Jack John Snow, right? Jack Snow. What do, who, who? Hold on, man. That's, that's John Snow. Snow man. That's the wrong John thing, Snow. man. Go, go, go. Um. <laughs> I mean, it's anyway, so, I'm distracting you. No, no, that's fine. I'm just so excited about it that I started reading it when they when the new series started because that's yeah, like man. literally this series is supposedly. I mean, he wrote he wrote a book on it, um, and apparently uh, Phil does. No, kid. Well, I know someone who knows him. So oh, I there see, you go. I'll ask him if I can get Someone, You're a big fan. Someone. Um, yeah. And so the, this, theoretically, this is just kind of hearsay, this whole this whole series that we're, we're seeing. So, so is the series up to snuff? It's good. It's phenomenal. It is okay. the way How many... the Game of Thrones were. We're on episode seven now. Episode seven. I got to catch up on that one, too. So and I think there's only going to be 10. I think there's only going to be 10 episodes or 12. And this like is the House of the Dragons, Correct. right? Right. So this, this is, is her story uh, back. Well, her family. Yeah. 
Right. They're for family. She had a twin right. brother, right? That was her twin early well, in the show. Twin, but okay, you're just jacking this all up. So I, I, I could. Chris, my one real quick, real quick. Real quick, real quick, real quick. I loved Game of Thrones. I okay. watched it every weekend religiously yeah. me and my wife but okay. the one issue i had okay was i needed a road map to yes. figure out there's all a these lot of people going on there's a i'm lot like of yeah, i just couldn't like read when people book, throw out names so better the read the reading the book is so much better well do you know dick and door and <laughs> whatever the dick, hell well, these first people. of all dick and door that's probably like some hobbits harry potter <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly that's that's some harry potter this is you know what this I'm is going. real fantasy this is dragons <laughs> You got you got people killing people. You got people slicing eyes out. This is the real yes. stuff. Anyway, that this was my struggle. With stick it. walking around with like I gotta, I gotta keep up with all the football names, let alone Game of Thrones names. Living underneath a, a staircase. And shit. No, Stark. This, there, there you go. See. There you go. There you go. Yes. Oh yes. All but, right. But we we we've all seen that. And again, it's just it's so great kind of going back to reading them because you forget a lot of stuff. Mm-hmm. And you can see how great Eddard, Ned Stark, was throughout the whole kind of the the whole series, matter of fact. I mean, even though, you know, he, he died in the first um, series, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, the first season, I mean, you just kind of see kind of the, the rippling effect that – he had on everybody and John. I mean, he just knew John was special in, in the beginning. Yeah. It was awesome. But anyway, I'm sorry. My I favorite that. thing, real quick, before yes, we real quick. go, was the many faced God. I thought that was the coolest. I want yeah. a little backstory to that. Yeah. I hope well, it's bo- interesting because a lot of people didn't like that. I loved it. Yeah. Yeah. When she goes in there and there's all those faces yep. everywhere and the, yep. he could disguise them. And I'm like, I want to know what's this guy's. It was so cool, so cool. But anyway, all right. I digress. That's Speaking okay. of gods, there you go. Gods of the SEC Hello. get taken down Whoa. for some reason. Hello. Number two, Georgia. Again, folks think I'm crazy. Uh oh. But I'm crazy excited. I'm just crazy excited because did we see uh, maybe that they might not be gods? Did we see like a team that actually may be beatable? Did we see that? I I was in shock here. I was getting nervous. Everybody was. That was a tight. That was a street fight. Dude, the the safety from Missouri coming up, <laughs> throwing his whole effort and body into the Macintosh. Come on. And Macintosh just folds him. <laughs> just tells me everything I need to know about Mac. I mean, Macintosh is a filthy animal at running back. But that safety is fearless. Why not? Number one. But yeah, those guys, they. Missouri came to play. They were trying to pull that upset. And they got I, I was wondering if you were going to knock them down, and you they, did. Yes, we'll get, and why is that? Because they didn't blow they, out Missouri. No, because the team, man, come on. I thought you like these softballs, man. Well, I was given the reality. Okay. But, yeah, the tape didn't lie. There you go. Right. Missouri stepped up and they gave did. Georgia problems. And Missouri's ranked, uh, okay, they're ranked nothing. So, I mean, come on. <laughs> they were two and two at the time. There you go. And who did they beat? Let's see who they beat. Sorry. Let's go Miz. The Mi- Mizzou. Missouri football. I'm sorry. They lost to. Well, okay. Eh, actually, they lost. Not they beat well, La Tech. Right. They, they, they lost, lost to Auburn and Kansas State. So, well, Kansas State, I mean, they're on a roll. Are they going to get some love from Zoe? It depends. It depends if they get any love from the 16 poll show, <laughs> even though they beat Oklahoma. Oklahoma. But they lost to Tulane. Yes, killing me, did. right? So, how can, so that, that, that's, the, that's the kicker, yes, right? That is. How do you It'll lose like to Tulane? Ah, ah. How does that happen? Tulane. 
Tulane, baby. Tulane. Mooney and Forte. There you go. Uh-oh. Georgia, though, Stetson helps pull them out of this rut. Making plays when he need to make them. 312 yards. He might be my, I mean, he 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 might be my front runner. I think I gotta get you a Stetson jersey. Please do, because I mean I am a huge <laughs> underdog fan, giving everybody the finger that, that wanted him to sit down, transfer, get the hell out of there. He's showing mm-hmm. everybody he belongs. Love lifters up where he belongs. Keepers, creepers. I know, like bro. Keepers, keepers love it. <laughs> I know. Georgia, right. number that, two. I never thought I'd see it, but how about that? See, it is. We don't play Eight around here on the Super Sixteen. We don't play around. You no, we don't. Play. Accountability is key here. Hello, Zorich ain't afraid to call him out. Hello, you ready for number one? Who is number one? Number one, Ohio State. Sharice's face is like, ah, oh, everybody's hating hate on me now. Everybody's hating on me now. How could you not? How could you not? After they just been dominating, come on, dot the eye. Or, oh Lord, yes. Dot I'm just telling you. Eye. I'm just telling you what I'm seeing. So, if you can't have Georgia, <laughs> here's the thing. It's like a double smack. Right. <laughs> it's a Michigan fan. Right. Oh, of course. It's like raisin brand, two scoops of raisins, two scoops. two scoops. See, you you have a, a a team that should be just dominating on Mizzou, but doesn't mm-hmm. happen. And so, what do we just say? Oh, well, okay, it's a bad game, and and they shouldn't be um, held accountable. I mean, if you're the number one team in the country. You're the number one team in the country for a reason. And that reason is you're dominating folks, right? Norwich is moving them down. We saw what happened with Alabama and Texas, right? Texas unranked. They freaking Mm -hmm. almost lose to Texas. What happens to them? Alabama gets knocked down. So do I have a right to say, you know, hey, what about Georgia? And Georgia. If they have a little fault. Should they not be knocked down? And I think they should when you got team like O State, Ohio State, who doesn't flinch, and they're throwing up 49 points on Rutgers. So and there was almost a wasn't there a fight at the end? Um it was I forgot what it was, but I know the head was, coaches. Right, right. Well, it wasn't at the end. I think and it was he gave them the Italian. Well, no, the, the they actually hugged it out at the end. Oh, did they? Yes, yes, sir. they actually did. Okay, I didn't see that part. Yes, I, yes. I saw the highlight where the Italian don't be messing around here. The Sopranos. <laughs> Were you a fan of the Sopranos? Just a little bit. Just, Just a little, little bit. bit. I'm joking. I, I have. Oh, you game. love it. Yes. If you had a Game of Thrones oh, or Sopranos, Ooh, Game of Thrones no, or that, Sopranos, that's a hard one. That's, a That's hard what one. she said. Oh, oh, hey. oh, but oh, hey, 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 I'm talking to you. <laughs> Don't come onto my field. <laughs> See, here's the how I, I can say this. Yes. If not for Sopranos, there wouldn't be a Game of Thrones. Yeah. And I say that because with Sopranos, like this is the first time we cheered for like the under or the bad guy, right? This is the first so time created. people had um, – we were cheering for people who had, like, huge faults, like killing people with cold blood, right? <laughs> right? I mean, this is stuff that we hadn't seen before, and so it showed us kind of compassion for Tony and his crazy life that he had to go see a shrink. And so you look at movies like Game of Thrones, and you see there's more depth mm-hmm. in characters now, and I think it was because of Game of Thrones. So – Although I love them both, yeah. I'm sorry, Sopranos. Although I love them both, if not for Sopranos, there would not be a um, Game of Thrones. And just to let you know, I actually have a Bada Bing license plate on my car. So look at you! I'm a huge, huge. Can't wait to get you out here. And if 
if the New Haven. If it wouldn't be so nerdy, I might have something else. Of, of, I might have some Game of Thrones stuff on my car, but that, that's a little too nerdy. At least with Sopranos, you'd be like, oh, okay, hey, it's a strip club. Okay, hey, you know, cool. Hey, how you with, doing? With Game of Thrones, like, you read those thick-ass books? You're a nerd, so. You know. Hey, there's nothing. We have nerds. Nothing wrong with nerds. It's on the nerds. script. It's, on the script. <laughs> it's in the book. It's in the book. <laughs> Hey, but you know what that time is. Let me read down the top 16 oh. for Chris Zorich. In the and, and there's a number 12 16 in There's a number 12 in there too. Hey, Ron, Rush and Ronnie rushed oh, away Ronnie. from his stake. Got Utah up there. Let's go. 16, the Demon Deacons of Wake Forest. Number 15, the Baylor Bears. Love it. Kentucky Wildcats. BYU. Cougars, correct? Utah, the Utes, Penn State, the Nittany Lions, the Oregon, Ducks, Tennessee, Volunteers, the Trojans of USC. Love it. Oklahoma State Cowboys, the Ole Miss Rebels, Chris. Michigan Wolverines at five. Oh. Uh-oh. Four, the Clemson Tigers. Uh-oh. Three, the Crimson Tide. Roll Tide. Two, the Georgia Bulldogs. And number one on the Super 16 Pole Show. Pole Show. Ohio State Buckeyes. There you go. And that brings us to this. Hey. Hey, hey. So, first one, Alabama, Texas a &M. There you go. That's got to be on everybody's list because we all know all the all the shit talking that they've been doing. Um, and, and I'm trying to find a way to see if Georgia can kind of come back and regain that title. So, I yeah. have uh, Georgia-Auburn, and then I have Ohio State at Michigan State, because I want to see if this is for real. Mel Tucker's to see what team happens, isn't be, right? and playing very well. Yeah, Chris. yeah it's, it's going to be a tough one. But, <laughs> but, are they real? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> and want to see some Tennessee LSU. T and. That's number what? Two? That's number Tennessee, four. LSU? How are you doing? I'm Chris. Number four. Yes. Yeah, so so you're going, the show that goes on here. While you I'm, here. Just, I'm thinking you're counting it down to number one. Oh, no, no, no. Best I'm, game I'm, to watch. I'm sorry. No, no. I'm sorry. Well, my, my best one was the Alabama game. I, I think that's, that's the game. one. Yes. Okay. Because I, I really, just, yeah, even though they're not right. Only you know, like that's like uh, you got to watch Tyson versus. Whoever, because well, it's just there's, there's a lot of shit talking, and and I think it's gonna I think it's gonna be a low scoring game, mm -hmm. um, but I I think that Alabama's gonna come out on top, but you know we want to see what, what Jimbo can do, can he bounce back? Because you know he's shitting bricks this week. Imagine he, they give he beat Alabama rate. last week. Kidding me, dude? He's going he's going nuts, nuts. He got spanked by Mississippi State. If, Alabama comes in there with their backup cornerback and bashes him. They ain't going to be gonna talking much smack. He's going to leave. <laughs> and my final game is yes, number 13, BYU. There it is. To see if they can do anything against Notre Dame. Number 47, Notre Dame. <laughs> <laughs> That was a good one. That was a good one. Number 47, Notre Dame. Number 47, Notre Dame. Could they pull the upset? Can they pull the upset? This is going to be exciting. Exciting. Rob, Rob is checking in late. We did discuss this. Okay. And he's discussing it now. This is in your top five games to watch. Every week, Chris breaks down his Super 16 teams in the land 
And that's brought to you by the National Football Foundation and the Football Writers Association of America. Chris Zorge's Super 16 Poll Show. Then Chris gives you his top five games to watch. And we are working on Deep Thoughts, Deep Thoughts. with Chris Zorich. I, I got a mirror, that mirror thing. I need, I need my boy Ivan. I see him in the chat. He was talking about, uh, real quick, he was oh. talking, wondering if you were watching the Lord of the Rings show that now is being offered on Amazon Prime Video. Yes, I am. However, I, I'm uh -oh. not that much into Lord of the Rings. So okay. Not, I'm, I'm learning, and I know this is this takes place a couple thousand years or a couple hundred years beforehand, but you know, I'm gotta learning. read the books. I'm gotta learning. read the books. Yeah, I, I don't know if I can get into the Hobbit and stuff like that. It's just no, uh, that's beyond. That's that's the uh, that's, that's, that's the marker. Like, yeah, that's fair. Yeah, that's fair. I, mean, I can see you coming into Comic Con right there. Oh, Look. oh. <laughs> <laughs> a leather. Uh, it's, uh, a yeah. snow house of snow, uh, leather. Yeah, sure, sure. I could see you coming in on there. Game of Thrones outfit. Would you ever go to a comic con? Uh, I've been, I used to collect comic books as a kid. Yeah, I've been to hundreds of comic cons, however, never did the, the cosplay thing though. So, oh, right. okay, Sorry. no worries, that's okay. I just wanted to know. Dragons good, hobbits no. Exactly. Says producer Cherie. I like them both. Huh. I like it all. Actually, I've been watching on Paramount Plus uh Twilight Zone, which what? uh Peel like back in the day? No, oh. the oh. new one. Peel. Okay. What's his name? Jordan. Jordan Peel. Yeah. Uh -huh. He's producing that. And it's really well done, man. I gotta give it a speaking about Jordan Peele. Did you see Nope? I wanna see it, man. It's actually pretty good. I like that. I heard it was really good and it's right up my alley. There you go. <laughs> wow, okay. So that was a perfect spot for that. No so, spoilers. So, no so, spoilers. So you ran that like six times already. Okay, great. It's my favorite drop. Apparently it is. Thank you it for really it, is. for for being all right. Yes. We need some music for Chris Zorich's Deep Thoughts with Chris Zorich. This is actually going to be a tough one because I don't know if you had a chance to see any of the, the uh, game day. Uh, a little bit of it. Did, did you see the thing that they did on uh, oh. Ryan Brazzi and his sister? Yeah. No, it was tough, man. It was tough. Was... And, and it was it was so... It, 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 and I just want to talk about it because it's great that you have teams that are playing against each other that, that still re respect their their opponents, right? So I don't know if you had a chance to see, but uh, Louisiana Tech, where they played and beat, they sent over kind of handwritten notes from their team. And it was great because we saw kind of another side of Dabo. Um, right. He was actually like the MC of like this, this cancer event. He's out there with his pink jacket, pink hat, you know, just doing it upright. And kind of seeing what these coaches can do beyond the X's and O's, right? And, um, I mean, it, it, she just had an amazing family, amazing brother. Um, and she wanted to be part of uh, the players' walk. Um, but unfortunately she, she wasn't feeling well, so she, they had to take her back home. And so he wound up doing it himself, but instead of by himself, they wound up getting shirts made that said Ella Strong. So you got the whole team kind of with them. I mean, that, that was really cool. Yeah, it was. And then unfortunately she wound up passing away. And you just kind of saw where, and it was so kind of uns, unscripted. Um, they were interviewing uh, the, the kid and Dabba was coming up to kind of give him a hug. And the kid was like, man, if it wasn't for people like him, you know, he, he'd been a great, you know. And it wasn't like, you know, Dabba was like, hey, yeah, that's my guy. He just came in and kind of gave him a hug. And they kind of gave him a kiss on the cheek and just walked away, you know. And, it, I mean, you can just tell that that was a real moment. Right. And how supportive uh, a team like that can be 
in that situation. And I'm sure there's there's a lot of things going on at, at a whole, whole bunch of different other schools. But when you're able to kind of publicize that and show that, then there's kind of this human side to the, to the football program that we're seeing. And I think it's amazing when we're able to kind of see that because it helps people see the the men behind these helmets or even even the coaches. And I'm not sure how many coaches would react in a situation like that. And so supporting this kid, supporting his family was really great. They had him there. And it was so funny because, well, not, not funny, but it was so kind of touching when they came back after they they – they did a the little spot at game day. I mean, you had thousands of people there at Clemson, and you, you could hear like a pin drop. I mean, it was right. just silent, which is just amazing, man. And there were your guys in the audience, man, wiping their tears, wiping their eyes, and stuff like that. Man, it's it was just an amazing story. And they had the family there, and they honored the family and stuff. But you know, I mean, imagine your kid sister going through that, and then um, you know, her passing away, and, and you still have enough courage to go out there. And play it. It's just an amazing situation. Well said. The human condition, empathy, so many things exactly are bigger than the game. Very true. When you combine the two and you mix them together, it becomes even more powerful. And the power of positivity and unity and teamwork, togetherness, just knowing that, hey, we got your back. You're not going to go through this alone. Is something more powerful than I, I don't know if many people have played sports or coached or whatever have not been able to experience that. Myself and Chris have, and I could tell you it's a hell of a lot more powerful. May uh, she rest in peace. Uh, 15 years old. It's not a long time time to live on this planet so it's very very touching very moving and i'm glad you brought it up here college football embracing everything about That's what it we do. That's what, it's we, what do. we do every week we do it live here on the super 16 po po show Go. with chris zorich Yes, thank you, HL. My mom is 82. Wow, oh, that's awesome. Today. Today's her birthday. That's awesome. And I'm getting I'm ending the show and I'm gonna call her. As you should. And I told her I would call her after the show. As you should. Exactly. Hey, what are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> but yes, uh, next week we'll be back here. Big games. Chris gave you the five. Will Michigan handle Indiana? That's going to be a story. <laughs> All of it. Tennessee. Take me to another place. Georgia dropping. Ohio State moving up. College football. The Kissing fall. a lot of people off. Crisp fall nights are on the way here. Monday nights, me and Chris will be live covering college football like nobody else in a creative, fun way. We always talk everything. Tonight we got into Game of Thrones. Hey. And, and the Sopranos. Sopranos. You gave a little history of that. And you're right. That opened the door. It, I think it was the wire and Sopranos that opened yeah. the door for all for everything. Absolutely. These el longer telling of a story. Sure. Movies are getting to the point where ah, I'd rather watch a show and get you're right. Totally I, I, I agree into. a thousand percent about you know, and, and that's why like I I don't watch like regular TV anymore. Yeah, exactly. Like like shows that are on like like uh, hour shows. I mean, I gotta like see character development. Right. I gotta see everything, as opposed to like a, a story being summed up in like forty minutes. I just yeah. Eh. There's sometimes I'm I'm sometimes I want that wrap it up. I want to get through that, but right. then. Just like I'm telling you, I'm letting Andor build up to five. And now Game of Thrones, I'm going to watch that. And, Surely. And watch through it. Try to understand all the names of every character. That was the only complaint I ever had. I love Game of Thrones. I still put Sopranos over it. It's my I understand. Opinion. I understand. 
<laughs> we'll be back though next week. Can't wait. Tomorrow uh tomorrow night we got Keeping It Fantasy on the Tape Never Lies Network with the guys getting you ready for your fantasy rosters. Who are you gonna start? Who are you gonna sit? All that kind of stuff. And then on Wednesday night, uh keeping it a hundred is gonna be early. Hey. Instead of 8 30, we're gonna start like now at eight, like this show. And we got the great Jarrett Payton, Walter Payton's son. That's awesome. Tell him I said hey. I'm gonna tell him you said good hey. Good dude. Is he a good dude? He is a good dude. Is there anything I should ask him or anything? Or no? no? I'm just, we're, no. We're good. Just, just say hello. Good dude. Yes, sir. Good Hi dude. from Chris, the runt. The runt. <laughs> the script. <laughs> I love it. We'll be back next week for Chris Zorich and our producer, Lady Bear, in the background. This has been another a great show. The Super 16 show. Perfectly said. As always, the guy is the man. He's Chris Zorich, three time All American. CBS. They might have to update their streaming, but they certainly didn't have to update their defensive player of the year. Oh, I'll tell you that. Oh. Chris Zor, national championship and college football hall of famer here on the Tape Never Lies Network Super 16 Poll Show every Monday night. Thanks for watching the Super 16 Poll Show with Chris Zorich. Like, subscribe, and comment. This has been a special presentation of the Tape Never Lies Network. Performance.